Hey, Bobby Manning here. Welcome to a film edition of the Garden Report. Wrote last week about one of the key questions going into training camp. Talked about it on our live edition of the Garden Report as well on Sunday night. Are Sam Hauser and Luke Cornett ready for bigger Celtics roles? Celtics seem to think they are, based on how the roster is constructed, the patience that they've exercised, and the aftermath of the Danilo Gallinari injury. He was going to be a big part of their rotation, whether filling minutes at the four, behind Al Horford, mixing in bench units with Grant Williams, sort of as a pseudo five, as well as a floor spacer for this team. So although he might have been rotation-wise, the player that the Celtics most afforded to lose in the aftermath of the offseason, he's still a real loss, especially when the Celtics were already relying on Luke Cornett, who I, of course, love, uh, to fill out secondary rotation minutes behind Al Horford and Robert Williams or in their absence at the five. So both players now, not X-factors necessarily, because I think more often than not, Ime Udoka is going to go with a tight rotation and those two players will not have minutes necessarily each night, particularly because of their limitations in certain matchups. Uh, but can they give you 10, 15 minutes or more on an off night or rest night for someone else? Those are going to be critical questions for this team as they try to compete in a pretty loaded Eastern Conference this year. Let's start with Sam Hauser. So the shooting stands out first. Ime Udoka had this uh, quote at, before he played significant minutes against the Bucks in an April game. Uh, of course, the shooting stands out, Udoka said, elite shooter. He's been that since I saw him, and that's right, 43% through his whole college career, almost 1,000 threes. Uh, his main G League stint, which was 11-ish games, I believe, last year, and then a uh, quick NBA stint. Uh, with a you know a couple dozen threes at the NBA level in garbage time, and in that Milwaukee game where he was great, three or four from three, this is Udoka before that game, a cere- cerebral player across the board. He's fit well in games uh, that he's played early in the season when guys were injured. We plugged him in, and he didn't really miss a beat as far as defensively and some of the things we were looking for. So always in the right spot, great team defender, and knows how to use himself, his angles. Cerebral guy, like I said, not just offensively, but defensively as well. That bodes well if you got Hauser stock, because why do, Why did this guy who's 43% for his life go undrafted? It's the defense, opening his hips. You saw it even in that Milwaukee game after Udoka praised Hauser. They're stashing him on shooters. This is actually a good matchup for Hauser, where you can play on Pat Connaughton, where you can play on Bobby Portis, who aren't necessarily going to be attacking him off the dribble. Does limit the switchability of the defense, though. And Udoka at times cut down uh, the switching scheme from everything to 1 through 4. And in Hauser's case, it would have to be 1 through 3. I, I don't see Hauser even at 6-8 playing center uh, like the Celtics hoped Gallinari would do a little bit of. Though, I think he can do some of the post-up work that they were going to try to funnel Gallinari's way. Uh, Adam Spinella, who did uh, the draft breakdown of Gallinari, as he, or not Gallinari, Hauser as he entered the league, Posted a pretty good stat on his post-ups from Virginia, I believe it was. His final season in college, he was well over 60%. 26 for 41, 63%. Uh, so he has some moves in the post. He can shoot over mismatches. Those are some of the areas where he can start to make himself an asset, not just a catch-and-shoot guy who's going to have his game decided like Aaron Neesmith often did on whether he makes or misses two or three threes each night. Uh, when he comes into the game, uh, he can actually attack some of the vulnerabilities on opposing defenses if he's given the opportunity here. Uh, his downhill game off the dribble didn't love it, as you see here in Maine, having to kick out, uh, not cr- even crane an advantage, an offensive rebound ultimately uh, got the uh, Maine Celtics a sh- three from Hauser after this uh, not great drive here. Uh, the rebounding, we'll see. He could stand to rebound at a high rate, even though Gallinari isn't necessarily an elite rebounder himself. And of course, staying in front of guys, that's going to be critical. He cannot be getting attacked off the dribble. Teams cannot be uh, trying to get him into actions. Fortunately, though, more often than not, opposing teams around the league are going to have that shooter you can stash a guy like Hauser onto. Is he going to meet the burden 
of playing the role that Gallinari was this year? I don't necessarily think so. But can he be an asset? It seems like it. Question is, how do you relieve Brown and Tatum's minutes? Because I don't think he stands in for either one of those guys. I think he's more in the mix of that four position with uh, with Grant and Al playing alongside those guys in a drop defense. That would make a lot of sense. Another guy who's going to have to play drop is Cornette. You see some of these plays where he tries to get on the perimeter and guard three-point shooters, and there's a few examples of this film where he's just kind of jumping from the post out toward the three-point line, throwing his arms up in the sky and hoping for the best. He's not going to be able to get out on some of those big shooters like a Thomas Bryant or Anthony Davis or someone like that, Carl Anthony Towns certainly. He's going to have to play the post. He's going to have to drop. And in that drop, I think you can get good rim protection from Cornette. And when Stevens and the Celtics first acquired him in 2021 after that trade deadline, one of the things that stood out was that pick-and-roll defense to Stevens. He had seen it and coveted it for a long time. His 7'2 height and wingspan, he's able to span across the post, recover, make blocks. Uh, he blocked a ton of shots, 2.6 per game in his main minutes. And they only played seven minutes a game with the Celtics once he came up in February. Uh, he had a weird season where he was playing for Milwaukee, playing for Cleveland. Talked to him about that at the finals in our interview. And once he got some stability, was able to shoot a decent mark at the rim. Three-point shot took a little bit of a step back in Maine last year. He is, though, over 30% for his career. I believe right around 32% for couple of different seasons now through a couple of different ro- locations he can probably draw some defenders to the three-point line now like Daniel Tice I don't know how big of an offense you want pick and pop Cornette to be though uh, can he take advantage of some mismatches in the post finish over guys hit one three a game that makes him playable along with the pick and roll defense and I really do think he's a better option to sprinkle in for a few minutes here or there than even Hauser especially if they're going to be trying to relieve Horford and Rob throughout the course of this season. I don't love the pick-and-roll game with him. That's going to be where Cabin Gelly actually has the edge uh, on Cornette as well, and he can actually shoot right up there with him. We saw that in Maine, uh, or rather in Las Vegas during Summer League. Cabin Gelly can get up there from three-point land. Now, does that translate to the NBA? It hasn't so far. Cornette's been able to do a little bit of it in a small role, and that's going to be the key for these guys at the back end of the roster. How much can you do with a little? Peyton Pritchard ultimately slid to a role last season where he was able to make the most of those limited minutes. That's going to be crucial for Cornette, uh, for Hauser, for Cabin Gillet, and especially the guys on the back end of the roster they're going to be trying out. Otherwise, Cornette, you're not going to be able to switch him. You saw Chris Middleton in that Milwaukee game where a lot of these guys got opportunities, uh, switch out, and have success shooting over Cornette, even with his length. The foot movement just isn't great, but that recovery speed uh, due to his length in the post is good, particularly if a big's trying to go at him. Brooke Lopez had a lot of trouble with Cornette in this game, and others have as well when he's made these appearances in the NBA. Now, they're going to get real opportunities in the preseason against NBA level talent guys who are shooting for roster spots and that's going to tell us a lot about these two players guys that we just haven't seen enough of now Maine they've made strides I think it says a lot about the Celtics development system that they've been able to raise these guys games to a new level particularly with Cornette's passing 16 assists to Hauser in the season over three per game high post activity and it translated to his spot NBA minutes he has some vision from that high post and you would hope he would at 7-2 they'd be able to do a little bit of something with that the Celtics love that high pick and roll handoff game Tatum can shoot some threes around those screens and he's certainly a big body to set some good screens there that's going to be where Cornette has his greatest chance to get involved pick and pop high screening and allowing for handoff three-point opportunities for his teammates. Hauser, it's going to have to be shooting 40% and above from three and being super reliable in those spots, which he actually has in his NBA appearances. He's made it rain, uh, even in his quick final spots uh, late in garbage time of those games. He was able to make some things happen with his shooting. Not a great summer league from him, though. He got hurt early. He was on the ball creating. That's not going to be his role in the NBA. 
Now, are these guys going to maintain the defensive backbone that Emi Udoka wants to? And do the Celtics get off to a hot enough start to be able to rest guys, to be able to play a deeper rotation? Those are going to be important questions, too, in the opening weeks of the season. So for now, I think it's a good bet Luke Cornette makes this roster. He's only got 300000 guaranteed through opening night. So he's one of these guys competing for a spot, even though he's signed a multi-year deal. Hauser, three-year deal, he'll be here. I think they really like him. Now, is he going to be able to relieve the Jays? I don't think so. That's going to be a question going forward. You go three guards at times to relieve one of them. Uh, who steps up in that spot if there's an injury? Tatum hasn't dealt with injuries throughout his career, though you've seen Brown with the hamstring even last season have to miss some time. So that's where the Celtics stand. Media day officially Monday. We'll have all coverage of that as well as anything else that pops up this week. Uh, training camp additions up to 19 officially at this point. One more possibly joining the fold, and we'll cover whoever that is here on the Garden Report News. Live coverage of the team, post-game shows coming soon, preseason just a couple weeks away. We're, of course, brought to you by uh, Athletic Greens, athleticgreens.com slash garden. You can get yourself uh, five free travel packs, a year's supply of vitamin D, as well as a phenomenal T-shirt. They are on the way soon. If you purchase one, just email your receipt uh, to under John underscore Zanis on Twitter. That's John underscore Zanis, Z-A-N-N-I-S. Now, what's Athletic Greens? It's this powder. Put it in your water, and you're getting 75 vitamins, minerals, adaptogens, as well as probiotics for your digestion, immune-supporting vitamin D, going to be key going into the fall. And it all tastes great. Easy. You can... Get a bunch of different vitamins. You can go get minerals. You can go get pills and infusions and whatever uh, to get individual components of what Athletic Green brings you in one stop with a cool bottle, cool gear. We've been loving it. Gives us a little boost of energy uh, through some of these groggy days of the fall and makes you feel like you have more of a pep in your step along with some diet and exercise. You can be a better you into the fall with Athletic Greens. You can support CLNS, the Garn Report. And you don't have to take our word for it. The reviews of this product are amazing. Just go check it out wherever they sell it. The reviews are high. Pretty much everywhere this is sold. And if you go to athleticgreens.com slash garden to buy it, you're going to get five free travel packs, the year supply of vitamin D, as well as the phenomenal t-shirt. So you can't beat that. Give it a try. See if it's for you. Uh, Com.com slash garden. Still with us. 40% 40% off a premium subscription. Love their sleep sounds. The calm of the day, Joe Sway talked about it on the Garden Report on Sunday. Good routine midday. You can use uh, meditation in the morning. You can use sleep sounds to go to bed at night as well as uh, adult and children bedtime stories. It's all there. Yoga. Tried that out. And the whole library is available to you for 40% off. Calm.com slash garden. Again, another app that people love. Good for your health. Good for your sleep which is critical to performance, whether on the court or in your job or whatever you're out there doing. Calm.com slash garden. Another way to boost your energy, your mood, and your mental health. As fall comes, days get a little shorter, uh, and you need to get your sleep to be feeling yourself. Calm.com slash garden. Uh, this has been the Garden Report. Subscribe, Celtics All Access, CLNS Media for our live editions of these podcasts, uh, A-List and more as well as the Cedric Maxwell podcast out now, Dome Theory with me. It's all there, and we'll talk to you again later this week.